The very first known interstellar object, or ISO, to pay a visit to our solar system was a rocky, elongated interloper with a slightly reddish hue. It was spotted in 2017 and was dubbed with the Hawaiian name Aumuamua. It was almost 10 times as long as it was wide, and it was extremely unusual. Objects in our solar system are rarely shaped this way, so astronomers hoped it could provide some clues into how other star systems form and function. For hundreds of millions of years, longer than I've been around, this bizarre guest has been wandering through our home Milky Way galaxy, not bothering to settle down in some star system. And then, it came across the solar system. After the space traveler was discovered, hundreds and probably even thousands of telescopes all over the world, including ESO's Very Large Telescope in Chile, sprang into action. They started measuring the object's orbit, its color, and brightness. That's when it became apparent that the space rock had an unusual orbit. Some astronomers suggested that Aumuamua was emitting hydrogen it had picked up during its journey between stars. This was a simple explanation for the mystery that had evoked lots of outlandish theories. When this bizarre guest was first spotted upon entering the solar system, scientists were not sure what its nature was. Some claimed it was a comet. Others disagreed, saying it didn't have the features typical for comets – a visible long tail and a coma, which is a clot of gases surrounding the nucleus of a comet. Plus, its shape was different from that of other comets. The only thing that made Aumuamua more comet-like was the way it accelerated as it went away from the Sun. The unusual object started to slow down on its way out, but in a strange way, as if not only gravity was in play there. It seemed like something was creating a force to counter this gravity. But unfortunately, this theory didn't quite fit either. The problem is that comets usually have large quantities of water ice on their surface. And as the sun heats this ice, it gets ejected as jets of gas. Those jets act as mini rocket boosters. But Oumuamua not only had no tail whatsoever, but it was also too small to capture enough solar energy to support this kind of activity. Of course, this mysterious space visitor caused some more outlandish theories. For example, some people started to claim that Oumuamua could be a spacecraft sent by a civilization living in another star system. However, scientists found a better explanation. A comet that is traveling between stars gets cooked by cosmic radiation. These rays penetrate thick layers of ice, converting up to 25% of water molecules into molecules of hydrogen. And then, this trapped hydrogen gets released when some star warms the comet. The effects of this process are almost invisible. This might be the reason why we didn't see a spectacular tail accompanying Oumuamua. At the same time, the potential comet was so small that this could produce enough force to power its acceleration. As for the amount of ice released as Oumuamua was coming closer to the Sun, it was likely too small for astronomers to spot it. Now, even though Oumuamua was the first known interstellar object to enter our solar system, it wasn't the last. In August 2019, Comet 2I Borisov visited us, becoming the second ISO astronomers managed to spot. Now, no one can argue that there are simply must be more visitors from faraway star systems than those two. ISOs are rare. But our solar system is pretty old. It must have been capturing some interstellar travelers over the millions and millions of years of its existence, even though they never stayed for very long. One study has taken a closer look at interstellar objects, and they concluded that these space travelers might be caught not in solar orbits, but in near-Earth orbits. The astronomers working on this project even go as far as to claim that there might be a lot of ISOs in orbit around Earth. Now, finding tiny objects in the vastness of the cosmos is extremely tricky. Think about it. What images of distant areas of space do we usually get? Mostly stars. Sometimes unclear pictures of exoplanets. Even more rarely, it can be disks of debris. But fine detail in small space objects? Almost never. So it's actually lucky for us that other solar systems send their inhabitants to visit us. Because by studying ISOs, we gain insight into the formation, evolution, and functioning of other star systems. Have you ever heard of the Oort Cloud? 
it's the most distant region of our solar system, and it's quite unusual. You see, the orbits of the planets lie mostly in the same flat disk surrounding the Sun. But the Oort cloud is believed to resemble a spherical shell surrounding the entire solar system. It looks like a gigantic, thick-walled bubble made up of chunks of ice and other space debris as large as mountains or even bigger. Astronomers think that the Oort cloud contains billions, if not trillions, of different objects. There might also be a connection between the Oort cloud and ISOs. Because scientists think that interstellar objects might outnumber those from the solar system in this region, even though no one has ever observed the Oort cloud directly, astronomers are sure it does exist. They made such a conclusion after observing the distribution of comets in our solar system. The Oort cloud could have formed from debris in the early solar system. But some experts argue that the largest part of this unusual shell could be interstellar in origin. If travelers from other star systems are as common as some studies suggest, lots of the bodies on the edges of the solar system are likely to have originated in other systems. Sadly, this theory hasn't been proven yet. Now, since we've been talking about comets, not Cupid or Donder or Blitzen, one of them has recently approached the Sun at breakneck speed. It was 96P Machols 1. This comet is around 3.7 miles wide, and astronomers think it might have arrived from outside the solar system. The NASA European Space Agency Solar and Heliospheric Observatory spacecraft has been monitoring the comet. So look at this. That's the comet's tail. It's mostly made up of gas. It's trickling behind frozen chunks of ice that are getting heated by the radiation coming from the sun. In some cases, a comet can have two tails, one made of dust and the other consisting of gas. And each of them can reach hundreds and, in some extreme situations, even millions of miles in length. In 2008, scientists analyzed the material left by 150 comets. They found out that the comet we're talking about was quite low in carbon and didn't contain a large enough amount of some other typical materials. This could only mean one thing. The comet was an interloper coming from another star system. It may have been ejected from its original solar system by the gravity of a large planet. After that, the poor homeless thing probably spent a large amount of time wandering around space. Until it came across Jupiter. The gas giant could have bent the comet's trajectory, trapping it in orbit around the Sun. There's one more theory. According to it, the comet formed in a poorly studied region of the solar system. And it has this weird composition due to its repeated journeys around the Sun. Now, scientists are watching the comet with anticipation, like Christmas. Since it's an atypical one, both in its behavior and composition, they don't know what they will see, which makes the whole process even more exciting. Most comets falling toward the Sun are quite small, not more than 32 feet across. That's why they burn up as soon as they come close to our star. But the sheer size of Machols 1, which is more than two-thirds the height of Mount Everest, seems to protect the comet from evaporating completely. <laughs>